Careful out there, Director. Anyone here? Guess not. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star. And the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it the force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle, trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss, so it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark, not unlike the hostile resonance, waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. Probably a loose power core somewhere. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau.
how that gate should open. Definitely happened here. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. I can't seem to... I, I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An auteur like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Hippies. been writing. We found a way to escape. It'll work this time. Writing? You found a way! No. I... I don't... Wait. There's something. It's my double. He's out there. I I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing to worry about. I'm dealing with it. It's fine, my friend. Let me handle him. You've met him? What the hell? Now, now, come on. You misunderstand me. That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. What's he doing here? Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong.
Dr. Emil Hartman, devoured by hungry darkness. Dr. Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained, fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC, brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FBC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound. A resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless, but weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Something else came. A resonance. The thing that had been Hartman. Change. Abandoned. Why did Wake want me to come here? That doesn't look like a house shift. Do I even want to know?
Of course, the hiss are already in here. has gotten a little wild in here. Burns it away, huh? This darkness is blocking the door. So now I have to deal with an interdimensional noise and sentient shadows.
The resonance carves its way through the thing that had been Hartman, vibrating, remolding. The sound changes the darkness, and the darkness changes the sound. They both changed what remained of Hartman. They all turned into something else. A third thing. The sound made darker. The darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched. Stretched as anyone when seen from out of time, like a worm through time. Almost an Ouroboros, a spiral, a maelstrom. The gravity well of a black hole, twisting inward, tightening, taking you deeper and deeper to the bottom, the heart, and through to the other side. The third thing said, when you hear this, you will know you're a new you. He said, we build you till nothing remains. He said, under the conceptual reality behind this reality, you must want these ways to drag you away. He said, baby, 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 yeah, orange peel. The third thing was a monster. He'd tear apart any ordinary person crossing his path. Now he crashed out of darkness toward Faden. There was nothing ordinary about Faden. I heard the darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched like a worm through time. The third thing was a monster. Now we crashed out of darkness toward Faden. Reminder, all employees are required to report their hours at the end of each month. The Federal Bureau of Control maintains that the is not subjective, and hours passed on alternative planes cannot be claimed. Astral dives do not accumulate overtime compensation. Thank you for your attention. My understanding of the darkness is fragmented, incomplete. This abyss, this void, it very much does not wish to be understood. If light symbolizes knowledge, then it stands to reason that darkness would equate to ignorance. By its very nature, it abhors comprehension. Of course, my own nature drives me to comprehend all. We are opposing forces, destined to collide. And given this conflict of natures, we know that the light of truth will burn away the darkness, both figuratively and literally. Any significant light source can be used as protection, even weaponry against this metaphysical gloom. And then there are the artists, I know for a fact that Tom, Wake, the Anderson brothers, and Lane all had some involvement with the darkness. The question is whether their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art beckons the darkness, or did their work perhaps even 
created. With Wake now secure in my lodge, I expect I shall grow closer to learning the answers to these questions. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. Well, perseverance is the foundation of knowledge. Speaking of, I must be off on my rounds. Standing up. Lighten them up. Ah, more plants. All right, let's go make some new friends. in this darkness is draining me.
what? What is that? I am hungry, darkness. Come on, elevator, time to go. Doctor, the old heart was desperate. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Thank you, you don't All right. I can use that. Brian Hennerman, 21 years old, resident of Southern Texas. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I really don't understand why I'm here. You know what you did, Mr. Hennerman. I do? Tell me about Delivery Disaster. The movie? I don't... I mean, it wasn't very good. That's not what your review said, but we'll come back to that. Tell me where you got the movie from. Movie night, with a, you know, a K, not an N, not... Not night, like nighttime, but... Who contacted you? 
Who told you to review that film? No one. I just did it because it looked obscure. I didn't even like the movie. I shouldn't have given it such a high score, but reviewing obscure films makes you look smart. And I thought if I looked smart, I would get listeners. My podcast would take off and I could move out of my parents' basement. I may even go to college and get a film degree like I've always wanted to. I swear. I swear, I swear, I swear. <sighs> okay, the kid doesn't know shit. I'm ending the session. right now I can't hear you it's a one-way system try to find an intercom Langston it's me Jesse I know I can see you on the monitors the cameras in there haven't worked since we sealed that sector off a couple years back let me guess you sealed it because of the monster guy wait did you see dr. Hartman Jesus, I really wish you hadn't opened that fire break. Okay, listen, you need to find Hartman and kill him before he gets out into the Bureau. That thing is a person? He was a person. We brought him here to study after he was, uh, oh, altered in an AWE. I forget the medical word for what happened, but now light physically hurts him. Do you have a flashlight? No. Uh, a lantern? Headlamp. Boy, a flare gun. Oh, Christmas lights. You could wrap them around your- I don't have any of those, Langston. Shit. Okay, uh, well, I'm sure you'll think of something. I'll keep an eye on you from the Panopticon. This is kind of exciting, right? Maybe from where you're standing. Right, okay, well, uh... Break a leg. Oh, why did I say that? Okay, this Hartman thing can't have gotten very far. Let's go flush him out. Hmm. Langston was right. This is kind of exciting. It's nice to have someone to talk to, you know? Ever since I got in charge of the Panopticon, people treat me different, like I'm crazy for wanting to work with altered items. People just don't understand the altered items like I do, you know? I don't want to brag, but it does take a very empathetic mind to connect with the items. Doesn't Still, want I don't to brag. know why people are making it so personal. <laughs> right. I mean, the teams in research handle paranatural materials every day, and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there, but when he's weird, it's charming. Altered items really aren't that frightening once you get to know them. If you figure out what they like or don't like, you know, what sets them off, then there's nothing to worry about. I guess at the end of the day, we're still just wild animals scared of our own shadows. We're supposed to be on the same team, but sometimes it feels like it's every department for themselves, like it's a race and we're all trying to be number one. If it is a race though, I'd say Darling is a mile ahead of everyone else. He was Trench's golden boy for years, but that relationship has gotten pretty tense, or so I've heard through the grapevine. Not that I spread rumors, just, you know, people talk. Not me though, I keep my nose to the grind. Too much work to do to focus on those kinds of things. I need to stay focused so I can get my work done and get home to feed Alfred. He's of course, just gonna talk forever, can't always make it home for meal time, so I have my neighbor check in on Alfred at seven o'clock if I'm not back yet. She's very nice. Her name is Maria. She's older. She came to New York in the 50s to attend school and has been here ever since. She has a couple of kids. I met them at Thanksgiving. Big family, very nice people. Anyway, she has a key to my apartment, and she gives Alfred his dinner if I'm not home. I'm gonna have to buy her a nice fruit arrangement as a thank you after this. I'm missing a lot of Alfred's meal times. She's probably gonna have to go to the store for more wet food. I'll have to remember to pay her back. Hold on, let me make a note. Pay back Maria for Alfred's food. Okay. Oh, one more thing. And buy her a fruit arrangement. All right, done. Are you a cat person? I don't think I ever asked. You seem like one, though. 
You'd like Alfred. He's very proper. Really carries himself well, you know? I named him after my favorite poet. Felt like a good fit. I got Alfred just before Sylvia died when I was at the... Huh. You know, I don't really remember where I got Alfred from. But, boy, those two did not get along. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Sylvia thought she owned the place. Didn't like me getting in her way. Scratched me more than once when I was just trying to move her food bowl. That cat was a real asshole. Wow. I'm realizing now that that language is not harsh. entirely, um, professional. You see, Sylvia didn't tolerate most people. Or animals. Or anything. And that's what I meant when I said, asshole. I never use that word about a person. Just, uh, you know... Hey, there's a light flashing on the console here. I gotta, uh, check this out. I'll get back to you later. Yes. 